We have an AMD Radeon card, and now we just want to be able to overclock it. What type of limits can we expect? And what type of undervolts can we really pull out of the card? First thing you have to understand is what type of card you have. So here is the card we have, and we know that the GPU boost clock can go up as high as 3.6 gigahertz, 3.06 gigahertz, and the GPU gain clock can go up to 2.52 gigahertz. This is important to know because you want to understand your limits of how far you can really push your card. Now there's two ways you can do this. I recommend going directly to AMD's Radeon software. Of course, you have the options of going to MSI Afterburner, you have ASUS GPU-Z, you have all kinds of different manufacturers you can use different software to overclock your GPU. But personally, I feel that AMD works best as you will have all your full capabilities when doing so. If you do choose to go to another, such as Afterburner, just know that you will have to be out of AMD Adrenaline, so you will not be able to take advantage of any, any of its features, such as AFMF2, so it's better to you go into AMD's Adrenaline so you can take full advantage. What you have to do is make sure that your software is up to date, look up here, as we currently are on the February 25th of 2025. I know that there's an update, so we're going to go ahead and update it right now. Back into Windows now. Let's see if AMD is up to date. And it looks like we are currently up to date with the latest updates. Let's go to manage updates here. And it looks like we're good to go because the last update was, to, uh, was today of May 13, 2025. So we're all good to go. So not only is it important to have AMD's adrenaline software up to date, but it's also important to have some vital software to help assist you on the overclocking. Now there's two that I highly recommend. Download HW Info 64 is the top. And we're just gonna go to the download and just install it. It's a pretty much a straightforward process when installing HW Info. Just download it, click free download. It'll give you a setup file, open it up, make sure to run it as admin, and it should come up just like this. So we wanna open this up here and we only need it in sensors only. We don't really need the full mode. And the best thing about this software, I'll let you know if there's new, uh, uh, new updates for it. Process is pretty much straightforward on the download and we're just going to install it. So because I already have it, I have to make sure it's closed. So we're gonna try it again. Now it's closed and we'll open it up and we'll go into sensor only. Now we're good to go here. And this is important to have because you want to be able to track down your voltages and you want to be able to see what type of temperatures that you're pulling out of your cord. For instance, we have the Sapphire Radeon RX 9070 XT Nitro Plus. So this is good for now to give us an idea of where the temperatures are. It seems that you can go up as high as 96 degrees Celsius, but I typically don't recommend going that high. More, anything more than 80 is pretty much excessive for a GPU. Now it can go up as high as 86, I would say at the maximum. So we're gonna, just to keep that idea in your head. It's important to know because that's why you have to follow here on the hardware info. Also another piece that you will also need is some sort of benchmark. Vermark is pretty good. Now just to mind you, if you do end up using any of the other software such as 3D Mark, sometimes it can bypass your overclocks, we recommend going into game benchmarks in order to do it, to make sure it's stable, run it for a, a couple hours just to get a good, decent idea. And you don't want to overdo it because it will prematurely wear down your card. But if you do undervolt it, that will certainly help your card. So most importantly, now you want to go to the performance side. This is where we can start to tinker with the card. And this is where you'll actually see your options. You'll see the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT. Just want to go over to the tuning tab. And then once you go over the tuning, more than likely you'll probably say default. What you want to do is go into custom and it will let you know, typically will inform you that if you do go into custom, it might avoid your warranty. If you don't feel like tinkering with any of these settings, I perfectly get it. And you just want something quick, you can go to overclock GPU and you can see the current performance. First thing before we start really overclocking the card, we have to get a baseline of performance. 
So we'll go into a game and get a benchmark first to get an idea of where it's at. So I'll go into something that is very demanding, such as Cyberpunk or Wukong. So now we'll go into the settings because we want to make sure everything stays exactly the same here. Now we have borderless setting. We're going to have it on 1440p, no V-Sync. And we also will have FSR on, frame generation on. Of course, we'll have full ray tracing off because we're not using NVIDIA. So we'll go ahead and do it this way. So just to get a baseline and a good idea of where it's at. So I'll run the test twice. Again, we pulled 178, so we know this is a steady bench. Let's go ahead and go into performance now, since we have a decent idea of where we are. So we're gonna go into tuning. As explained earlier, you can set it to custom. Make sure it's set to custom. And here you can actually start setting your different parameters. So the first thing I like to adjust is the GPU tuning. So we're gonna turn that up on and we will change it up by 25. I like to go into frequencies at 25 to be safe. And then for voltage offset, because we want to under volt it, I'm gonna go negative 10, just to play on the safe side. And usually you can do this, oop, <laughs> that's what we, we don't wanna do that off the bat, off the rip, not a good idea. So we're, we'll put negative 10 with a overclock of 25 megahertz. So very slight overclock. And for anything else that you do want to adjust, such as the VRAM, we will adjust that later. I usually like to do it one step at a time. This could get a little bit tedious when you do this. So just to forewarn you, just make sure to apply the changes. You can add it to a specific game profile if you choose to, but this is going to be more of a global tuning. So we're going to apply these settings here. And you can even do a stress test, like a quick stress test, just to get a good idea of how it will react. A test like this, you can run it as long as you would like. Currently only have it set for about 60 seconds. With patience, you can get the perfect overclock that you are looking for. And what you wanna look for is if there is any type of issues when you are during, during a benchmark, if you start to see some sort of throttling or if you see some sort of artifacts, that means you have to step off a bit. But with a slight increment like this, more than likely you will not see anything this early in. If you do, then you definitely have yourself a, a, a defective card for the most part. But let's give it a shot, see how much of a change we get in frames with this test. While we already see a little increase, we have one frame that is a little something, but again, we would have to rerun it to really check it. What we can do now is we can go back over to AMD Adrenaline and we can adjust it a little bit more. We can keep the same voltage offset if you like, and then say we set it to 50 now. And this is just one side of the equation. There's also VRAM tuning, which I will explain just in a little bit, but every time you do change a setting, just make sure you apply the appropriate changes and then you can go back in and then rerun the test. We only got 178. So you just keep going until you find the perfect setting that fits your GPU. If underclocking is more important, you wanna focus on that, you wanna drop it down by negative 20, you can. And then let's say, we do 75. The idea is trying to find the perfect combination. Now we got 179 out of it and we're just gonna keep tinkering it. This seems to be my most stable setting I currently have. When you find that perfect spot for your GPU, when it comes to your clock speeds and when it also comes to your undervolt, you want to open up Furmark and you're gonna run a 15 to 20 minute test just to make sure it's stable. You wanna look for any artifacts or any weird issues or any type of bottlenecking. And you wanna also make sure the temperatures are also stable. If it passes after 15 to 20 minutes, you'll be pretty much good to proceed to the next step. 325 plus megahertz and a offset of negative 40. 
Now, this is when I'll get into the VRAM tuning and see how far I can push that. So we're gonna save this. You wanna make sure you do, because unfortunately when it comes to AMD's adrenaline software, it'll forget. The reason being, your system doesn't lock up. So you just wanna make sure to save this file and then continue on. And now we'll get the VRAM tuning. When it comes to VRAM tuning, I usually like, like to add 50, so it's 2518. So I'll put 2568. And then from there, I'll go on to testing it. I'll apply the changes and see how well it responds. It's a number that we don't want to see. At least it's stable, so we're gonna try to push it up a little bit. We're gonna put 2618. Simply just add 50 until you find the number you're looking for. And then you wanna check out your temps just to make sure that they are aligned to your GPU and it looks like we're looking good. And so far we pushed it up to 2768 and now we're getting a frame rate about 188 to 189. Make sure you do a stable test after you find that sweet spot on your graphics card. Right now we have, we're about 15 minutes in nearly 15 minutes in and no signs of artifacts no. usually you'll notice a type of performance decrease even though you have your settings set up higher if you notice any type of bottlenecking which we noticed when we just pushed it slightly over 50 megahertz here if we would have pushed it up to 2818 you'll notice the decrease in performance and it looks like for our sweet spot here it's 2768 for a max frequency and 325 with a voltage offset of negative 40. So we're pretty much all good here. And you could even go further and go to power tuning if you would like, and you could increase your power limit. But if you do so, it does help out this whole voltage offset. But again, this is optional. This is up to you. If you wanna to choose to decrease it a little bit just to see if you can get more out of it, Adjust it to your liking to see if you're able to get any stable performance out of it because that's really what you're looking for. You're not looking for any more frames. I think we're pretty happy where we are as we push from 178 frames to all the way up as high as 189 frames. I think that's pretty good for a overclock and undervolt, don't you? If you notice any type of instability, you'll notice it right away. You'll notice that the frames won't be as high as we were getting some weird frames because it was really low at 110 to 115 and we noticed that's where the bottleneck is. Temperatures are nice and cool, nice and stable, exactly where we want it. And if you want to make sure to give it a final stress test, you can. If you have any questions about overclocking, feel free to join Discord as everybody there is willing to help also, feel free to put it down in the comments down below. If you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the like button if you did find this content very useful. Make sure you follow my X handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Thanks again so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.